This video will show you how to assemble the Rad Wagon 5. Photograph all four sides of the box and the label with the serial numbers. Make note of any damage to the box and keep these photos for your records. Use flat side cutters to remove any packing strips. Pinch and pull the plastic handle tabs on the outside of the box to remove them, and then remove the box top. Locate the owner's manual and quick reference card. Keep these nearby for reference during the assembly. Locate the accessory box that contains the keys, charger, headlight, pedals, bicycle grease, and the assembly toolkit. The assembly toolkit contains a variety of tools to help with assembly, but don't worry if you end up not using some of the tools. You will also need a pair of flat side cutters, a pedal wrench, a bike floor pump with a Schrader valve and pressure gauge, and a torque wrench with a set of Allen bits and a crowfoot bit. Cut the zip ties securing the front wheel and fender to the frame and set the wheel and fender aside for later. Remove the rest of the packaging, including the bottom tray, and recycle according to local rules, or save the packaging if you might need to ship your bike in the future. Extend the center kickstand for stability during the assembly. Use a 5mm Allen wrench to remove the stem faceplate and hardware and set aside. Orient the front fork so that the brake caliper is on the non-drive side of the bike. The drive side is the side of the bike with the chain. If necessary, rotate the stem and front fork and make sure the cables are not twisted around the head tube. Hold the handlebar up on the stem with the brake levers facing forward and the throttle on the rider's right side. Trace the brake cable on the rider's left side to ensure it runs straight down. Center the handlebar on the stem. Install the four bolts by hand and use the Allen wrench to tighten part way in an X pattern until the handlebar is just tight enough that you can adjust its angle. Adjust the handlebar so it is roughly parallel with the front fork. Ensure the gap between the faceplate and the stem is evenly spaced and the bolts are tightened evenly. Use a torque wrench to torque all four bolts in an X pattern to the value listed in your owner's manual. Begin the front wheel installation by removing the protective plates from both sides of the front wheel. The front wheel hub has black end caps on both sides of the hub that align with the indented slots on the inside of the fork. If either of these end caps have come off during shipping, reinstall them on the hub to ensure a secure fit during assembly. During assembly, be careful not to touch the brake rotor on the front wheel as doing so can deposit oil on the rotor and reduce braking function. Remove the fork protector plate and recycle according to local rules. Use a 6mm Allen wrench to turn the through axle bolt in a counterclockwise motion to unthread from the fork and fork protector plate and then fully remove the through axle and set aside for now. Remove the hydraulic brake pad spacer from the brake caliper on the front wheel. Once you've removed it, do not squeeze the front brake lever until the wheel is fully installed. Carefully lower the fork onto the front wheel. Guide the fork arms onto the wheel so that the hub fully enters the indented slots on the inside of the fork arms. Pay attention to the brake rotor. It needs to slide between the brake pads evenly. Insert the through axle through the brake side of the fork and wheel and push all the way until you can thread by hand into the other side of the fork. Use the Allen wrench to slowly turn in a clockwise motion to fully thread into the fork until secure. Use a torque wrench to torque the through axle to the value listed in your owner's manual. Test the front wheel installation using these tests. First, with a friend holding the front of the bike up, spin the front wheel to ensure it has no wobble or looseness. Second, while straddling the bike with hands on the handlebars, squeeze the front brake lever with your left hand. Rock the bike forward and backward. Ensure the front brake prevents the front wheel from spinning and that there's no play or wiggle in the wheel, handlebar, or front fork. Any sign of play or wiggle is a sign that you may not have properly secured the front wheel 
and that you should repeat the installation process. Locate the headlight and front fender for installation. Use a 10 mm wrench and a 5 mm Allen wrench to remove the headlight mounting hardware from the fork bridge. Pass the fender from the back of the wheel forward under the fork bridge and position the mounting bracket in front of the mounting point on the fork. Pass the bolt and flat washer through the headlight mounting bracket, fender bracket, and mounting point on the fork bridge. Pass a flat washer and lock nut over the other end of the bolt and secure by hand. Use the Allen wrench and a 10 mm wrench to tighten the bolt until secure. Unthread by hand or use a 4 mm Allen wrench to remove the mounting hardware from the L bracket mounting point on the fork arm. Place the fender arm eyelet over the L bracket and thread in the bolt by hand. Secure the mounting bolt with the Allen wrench. Repeat the process with the mounting arm on the other side of the fork. Check that the fender and headlight are centered. The wheel should spin freely without touching the fender. Use a torque wrench to torque the fender mounting bolts to the values listed in your owner's manual. Adjust the headlight angle slightly downward so that it will illuminate the road ahead without blinding oncoming traffic. Use an 8mm wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten the headlight angle adjustment bolt until secure. Locate the headlight cable end with the red interior. Line up the internal notch and pins and the external arrows on the headlight connectors and push together without twisting. Find the pedals and identify which is the right and left pedal by the sticker on the pedal or the markings on the pedal axle. Apply a pea-size amount of bicycle grease to the threaded portion of each pedal axle. The right pedal has a smooth axle and threads onto the drivetrain side of the bike. Carefully thread the right pedal by hand onto the right crank by turning clockwise toward the front of the bike. Be careful not to cross-thread or damage the threads. The left pedal has grooves on the axle and threads onto the left side of the bike. Carefully thread the left pedal by hand onto the left crank by turning counterclockwise, also toward the front of the bike. Once the pedals are fully threaded onto the cranks, use the torque wrench with a crowfoot bit to tighten to the value listed in your owner's manual. Wipe off any excess grease. Next, we'll inflate the tires. Check that the tire beads and tires are damage-free and evenly seated around the rims. For more information about seating tires and tubes, refer to your owner's manual. Use a floor pump with a Schrader valve and pressure gauge to inflate each tire to the recommended PSI indicated on the tire sidewall. Do not over-inflate or under-inflate tires. Open the bottom seat post quick-release lever and remove the telescoping seat post. Adjust the clamp so it's centered over the notch on the seat tube. Apply a small amount of grease to the seat post and install the seat post. Be sure the minimum insertion marking is completely inside the seat tube. Adjust the seat post up or down to a comfortable height and then close the lever fully. To add more height to the seat post, open the top quick release lever and extend the top portion of the seat post as needed. With the lever open, tighten the thumb nut on the clamp until you feel resistance at the lever. Ensure the seat is pointing forwards and close the lever to secure the seat post. There should be enough resistance to leave an imprint in your hand. The seat post should not move once the lever is closed. Perform a handlebar twist test by standing at the front of the bike and bracing the front wheel between your feet and lower legs. Hold both handlebar grips and push forward with one hand while pulling back with the other hand. Push and pull with about 20 pounds of force with each hand. Check that the handlebar doesn't move out of alignment with the wheel. Then switch hands so the opposite hands are pushing and pulling with about 20 pounds of force. If the handlebar and stem rotate out of alignment with the front wheel, check the tightness of your stem clamp bolts and tighten if necessary. Next, perform a handlebar push test by bracing your front wheel against a wall and mounting the bike. Adjust the seat height so you can sit with your feet on the ground and your hands on the handlebar. Squeeze the brake lever and push the handlebar toward the wall with about 100 pounds of force. 
If the handlebar rotates inside the stem, you will need to realign the handlebar and retighten the stem faceplate bolts. Be sure to torque them to the value listed in your owner's manual. Check the bike's chain alignment by standing on the right side of the bike and rotating the right pedal and crank toward the back of the bike, as if you were pedaling backwards. Verify the chain moves through the drivetrain smoothly. Check the bash guard position so that it does not touch or interfere with the operation of the derailleur. If it does, gently pull the bash guard away from the derailleur. Press the power button on the remote to power on the bike. Once the e-bike powers up and the color display is on, there are some things you might want to configure before your first ride. Hold the menu button down on the remote to enter the menu options screen. These include display options and motor class settings. Press the down button to navigate to the class menu where you can switch between motor class settings. Press the menu button to confirm your selection and then return to the menu options. Your selection will default the next time your bike is powered on. Refer to your owner's manual or visit the Rad Power Bikes Help Center to learn more about the different motor class settings available on your e-bike. Navigate to the Range menu and switch between displaying the remaining battery range estimate or remaining mileage range estimate. Before riding, check that all hardware on the bike is torqued to the values listed in the owner's manual. Refer to the owner's manual for instructions on how to adjust components on the bike for comfort and safety. If you're assembling the bike for someone else, be sure to attach the Rider Quick Reference Card to the handlebar. We recommend getting a tune-up from a local, professional, reputable bike mechanic within the first 50 to 100 miles of riding. Follow the maintenance schedule in your owner's manual. Work through the safety checklist in the owner's manual and test the bike fully before riding. Never let anyone operate this bike unless they are at least 16 years old and have read the operating instructions detailed in the owner's manual. The age requirement for e-bikes may be older than 16 in your area. Check your local laws and rules for the areas you intend to ride. Whenever you ride, wear closed toe shoes, comfortable clothing, and of course, a helmet. Make sure you can be seen by others on the road by wearing bright and reflective clothing and ensuring your headlight and taillight are always on and visible to others. E-bike disc brakes may wear out faster than would be the case for non-motorized bicycles, requiring more service. Make sure to inspect brake components before every ride and follow the maintenance intervals listed in your owner's manual. Like all vehicles, e-bikes need to be checked regularly to ensure nothing will jeopardize your safety or the safety of those around you. Follow all safety instructions and checklists in the owner's manual. The latest update to the owner's manual for your rad bike is always available on our website at radpowerbikes.com forward slash help. Make it a habit to thoroughly check your bike before every ride. Reach out to our product support team if you have any questions and ride rad.